I've been on this journey of trying to fully discover who Taylor Swift is, and it has led me to this last video of this trilogy, or you could call it the end of an era, if that's what you want to call it. I initially didn't intend to stay up until 12 for the release of the album, but Abigail and I were already up, and I figured that I might as well tap in. So I listened to Fortnite, which was the first song, and then honestly, I was I was tired, so I went to sleep. My original plan was to listen to the album fully through each day, then, then go back and listen to any song I want, but then I realized that quickly changed because the next morning, Homegirl went and just dropped a whole mini discography. <laughs> I mean, it was a double album, but 31 total tracks is crazy. And at the end of the video, I'll try to rank my top five songs and include any honorable mentions. So I spent the day doing fairly normal things, at least what I would consider normal. And I eventually listened to the entire album at least once. And I'm not gonna lie, most of the songs sounded the same, but it was my first time listening through it, so I had to give it some grace. I think my initial disappointment came from the first song, and this is totally a personal preference. I think I just expected more Post Malone in that song. So when I realized that that's what all I got from Post Malone being featured in that song, this is what I was thinking. Posty ain't posty and like he post to. <laughs> okay. But I did take the time to watch the Fortnite music video since that's the only music video of hers that I hadn't seen up until this point. Because I uploaded this video and literally like eight hours later or something like that, she posted this post right here and I was just like, bruh. It also dawned on me that I had a race the next day and while I have experienced listening to Taylor Swift while running, I really wasn't looking forward to it. I'm already gonna dub it the worst day because I just, running and listening to this type of music just doesn't sit well with me. I had this race planned before I even knew about her new album or I even knew I was making this video really. And these are the moments where I'm like, why Why do I enjoy doing this? Cause it's, I'm tired. I feel like it's not really an upbeat album. So running to it is not gonna be the best, I feel like, but we'll see what happens. This part of the video shouldn't be called day two. It should be called the tortured runners department. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was terrible. And if you're interested, I'm doing a 14 mile run. I understand that's crazy, but it's separated by two parts because they're doing a four mile run and a 10 mile run. You do the four mile run first and then the 10 mile run is next. And then if you do both, you get a medal. So a total of three medals. Yeah, I'm. my plan is just to casually run. So I'm not trying to like break my personal record or anything like that. I'm just here to have fun. So all together the playlist is like two hours and two minutes or something like that. And I'm guessing that I'll finish around an hour and 55 to maybe two hours and 10 minutes. At least that's my guess. All of my double downers. The first song I'm playing right now is But Daddy I Love Him. It hasn't been the best so far. Around the 10K range and the song that was playing was Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. So far I got like three songs that are for me runnable, if that makes sense. But they probably won't go to my playlist. I have no idea what song's playing right now, but it's a perfect running song for me. One more mile, baby! Woo! <laughs> That was rough. I can honestly 100% confidently say that was worse than the 22 mile run that I did in the very first video of Taylor Swift. And I think running that 22 miles was better because this time I'm listening to one like album. It's just one kind of similar like calmness or chill vibe throughout the album. But the 22 mile run, I could have like, I listened to Folklore and, and uh, Evermore. But at the same time, once I did that, I could listen to things like Reputation, which was more a beat and it was a change of pace and all that kind of stuff. So. I'm never doing that again. Oh, and if you're curious, my time was one hour, 56 minutes and 56 seconds, which isn't that bad. Now I'm gonna go home and take a nap because I earned it. I'm also already at the point where like the songs or the lyrics are getting in my head already. Now I'm down bad crying at the gym. <laughs> I'm so depressed, I, like it's my birthday every day. Who's afraid? <laughs> Who's afraid of little old me? <laughs> I'm laughing because if Abigail were to walk in this room right now, it'd, be, it'd just be a fun, funny sight to see. I also want to apologize because I know with full confidence that I am nowhere near close to being able to sing. And I'm sorry you had to listen to that. But the worst or the best one, depending on who you are, that randomly pops in my head almost all the time is Florida. Today I decided to really look at the lyrics and read all the lyrics for each song because let's be honest, it's not like I was paying attention to the lyrics while I was running because I was focused on other things. So I read the lyrics for every single song and I understand that reading the lyrics without listening to the songs while doing so, they take away from some of the emotion behind the words. So I listened to some of the songs while reading them, specifically the ones that I hadn't listened to that much. As expected, there are deeper meanings into songs like Thank You, Amy, 
the smallest man who ever lived and who's afraid of little old me which honestly should be the case anyway because most artists and hopefully all artists have a reason to why they or a collection of people have the lyrics that they have even if it's because it's catchy I eventually just went to this website called thecut.com and they have an article named Tortured Poets Department, All the Lyrics, Conspiracies, and Easter Eggs. And I thought it was funny as I was reading, Swifties that know the history of Taylor Swift, I guess they're called Swiftorians. <laughs> anyway, this, this helped me out. But let me just also add, shout out to the Thrifty Swifty on TikTok because uh, she helped me out a lot. And I watched a bunch of her videos and I think I'm enlightened to say the least. Let me also just add the amount of people that I've seen do like deep dives on social media. To me, it's the same as like any kind of hip hop fan or anything like that discussing why like what this person meant by these lyrics or this diss track meant this. So the next time, I guess, if you make fun of somebody in either camp or either area, you're basically the same type of person just in a different genre. So I started seeing opinions from my friends that I knew that were certified Swifties pop up. I mean, really I saw it from like the first day, but I just wanted to give them some time just in case their opinions changed. But I even asked my friend that touched her hand back in 2011 what his favorite song was, which he said, love of my life. I had a different friend that gave it a two out of 10. And overall I felt like the common consensus was, it's not my favorite, but it's all right. And maybe their opinions will change later on because with things like this, sometimes it takes time for it to grow on you. And the more you listen to it, maybe the more you do a deeper dive of the lyrics, I don't know, you might like it more but it is what it is right now so even though i have like a better understanding of the songs now for some reason they still sound similar to me i almost hope she does something like she did with the folklore album like a long pond studio session but the tortured poets department edition <laughs> but until then i did see some people's opinions online some people that i don't even know like this one from Ali Belairs. Good morning. I've been jamming Taylor Swift into any hole that i have that will listen and i just want to say i like it it's like she said, let's take off the parental controls. Take off the training wheels. You want to go for a ride? Give me a pen and a cigarette and let's get out of here. She went from speak now to sit the f down and you speak when you're spoken to. Get them, Taylor. Get them, Taylor. Get them, Taylor. And this one by some person named Charlotte. Okay, I've listened to Taylor's album thrice, which given my work schedule is a considerable amount of time. Preach. Here's my nutshell review for non-Swifties. If you are a Swiftie, you are not the audience for this review. This is for non-Swifties, all caps for emphasis. If you're looking for absolute bangers, big chart hits, the kind of songs that come on the radio, and your response and the response of those around you is immediately, this is my Florida, you're most likely going to be disappointed. She went on to say, not saying that's true for everyone, not true for everyone, but it's probably true for most folks with this particular desire. But if you're looking for an album with interesting and thoughtful lyrics, excellent composition, exceptional vibes, the kind of album you can put on and get high with your friends and just relax, The Tortured Poets Department is a brilliant production. Now, I am not a specific like audio head or anything like that, but I do feel like the production side of it is really good. I mean, I would imagine that she would get good people to produce this album. But again, what do I know? I do feel like it's too many songs, but at the same time, if you look at Spotify specifically, the plays for each song, the most plays are at the beginning of the album, which is technically the first album, then it kind of descends or plateaus for the rest of the songs. And that doesn't like discredit her hard work or her talent or anything like that, but I just think 31 songs at once is a lot and other artists have done that in the past where they release one album with a bunch of songs or a double album or something like that and has it been successful i don't know you tell me i can't really think of one off the top of my head so i was tired of doing the same thing over and over so i tried to switch it up first up was playing a little playstation and i'm specifically playing need for speed unbound which is a little old i think honestly i just want to relive the glory days of this game series like back with need for speed underground 2 and all that but Anyway, let me just say Taylor Swift and this style don't go together at all. Specifically this album. Maybe I'll just put I can do it with a broken heart on repeat or something like that. Maybe that'll make it better next time. And then the second thing I tried doing was the FPV drone simulator because I'm trying to get better at flying these drones to expand my video tool set. And I got to say, doing this wasn't as bad as playing the PlayStation. Still not great, but not the best. And as I approach the last day, let me just say that I have found myself going back to specific songs more often than others, which probably means that they're gonna end up in my top five. Florida! I could really tell I was tired of this album because I just got tired of listening to it and I wanted to listen to other things. Like people are dissing people in the hip hop world and then like different rock songs have come out and I, I wanna listen to something else. <laughs> but I still prevailed as I did more normal day-to-day -day things. We had a work function and one of my managers actually asked me if I listened to the album because they watched the one of my previous videos or whatever. And so we were talking about 
about it. And then she was saying how her husband thought it was too many songs. She really thought the same thing. And I, I don't know the level of Swiftiness they are or if they're Swifties themselves, but it was just interesting that another person said that and I that was unprompted. And finally, my top five songs are I Can Do It With A Broken Heart, Down Bad, The Prophecy, The Black Dog, Florida, and my honorable mentions are I Can Fix Him, Cassandra or Cassandra, however you pronounce it, Who's Afraid <laughs> of Little Old Me, and So Long London. And let me remind you once again, for the billionth time, that this is my opinion. And I also may not connect with specific songs like you do, and that's totally okay. And I'll admit some of my choices were because of the melody, and some of my choices were because of the actual lyrics. And some of the songs might have a blend of the two in my mind. But also, let me be clear, this is all subject to change as life goes on. Even with this, I can say with full confidence that this album, I'm not really a fan of it fully, and it's not in my top three of her albums. Again, that could change. I've only listened to it for a week, and I don't know how often I'll listen to it as time goes on. So I think people should take a deeper dive into the lyrics, and not just her lyrics, just any artist really, but the average person isn't gonna do that. So for them, that they're gonna think it's a bad album automatically. I think the funniest, but like deep meaning lyric or one of them. I mean, there's a bunch, let's be honest, but it's, I cry a lot, but I'm so productive. It's an art and that's funny. And it's also kind of sad because real people deal with that kind of stuff. And some people hate their job, but they're actually productive and yeah. And as far as my Swifty meter, um, I'd say it really doesn't move. It's, it's kind of still the same, still there. Doesn't increase, doesn't really decrease. I wouldn't call myself a Swifty. I would just call myself somebody that appreciates her music more than the average person. So is there, is there like an in-between? Am I allowed to be like that? <laughs> so now, it's after saying all that, it's my turn to ask you. Do you like the album? What's your favorite song? Are there too many songs? Or just what's your overall opinion? And while you're thinking about that, let me just be clear. I'm not turning my channel into a music review channel, but I just wanted to try something new. I mean, I'll do something like this in the future with bands like maybe like Pink Floyd or the Foo Fighters or something similar, because like I know who they are, but I don't really know their songs. I just can't justifiably do artists like Kanye or Drake, because honestly, I grew up listening to them. Most of their songs, most of the songs that aren't even on the radio or the radio hits or anything like that. So I can't really do that and have like a clear space of analyzing it, if that makes sense. But with Taylor Swift, I, I knew her big hits as her career progressed, but I didn't really know her songs. And she has such a large discography and not many artists have that. So like for her, it was, it was perfect. But until then, I'm gonna try to find something that's new to me, something new to try. And I encourage you to do the same. Sunday morning views quickly turns to afternoons. It's like that I can barely go and catch it, kinda how I feel with you.